Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peeps, my peoples. Peep squad is in the building, baby. We're going to the top. We're going to bring others with us. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Brian McKnight and his children. It is going down like OMG. It's just sad to see it play out in the media. So let's check out Brian McKnight for real, for real. Hey guys, it's Brian McKnight here. Uh, I've been traveling about 17 hours to Guam. I have a concert tonight and I got off the plane to some of the most heinous craziness I've ever seen in my life that my oldest son, Brian, would post that I'm abandoning my children. And the reason why, I suppose, is because I have a new family. And I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son, Jack, who I'm very proud of, which isn't to say I'm not and haven't been proud of my other children, but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day. But we'll get back to that in a second. Anyone who knows me knows over the last 20 years, 30 years now, as a matter of fact, that I've been there for my children every step of the way until recently. And let's be clear, my two sons are 30 and 27, not 12, not 13, but 30 and 27. Now my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I've always been the sounding board and I've always been the one that tried to, to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it because I know how much I would have appreciated it when I was their age. Um, I would tell you as parents out there, entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do and I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I am guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. But I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. And I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years, but you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at Children's Hospital. And let's be clear, Leilani has been one of the only people who's been an advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did and they have spit in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote, that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop smoking and they would have to pass a drug test. And the day I had the doctors looking into it, Nico's on there, you know, taking a big puff, of which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm, saying that that's bad, if that's your choice, that's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now let's go to the part where we have been estranged. Again, we talk about abandonment. We're not, it's, I'm not abandoning them. We are estranged, which happens more often than not in this particular situation. BJ broke into our home a few months ago and he put X's on the eyes of our wedding photos. And then he put a photo of my first wedding on Leilani's vanity. It was at that moment, and after I heard him say, and was pointed to from other friends of mine that saw his posts on social media, that he, he basically said that I was better off dead to him than alive. I was more valuable to him dead than alive. And that was the end of me dealing with him. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see that not my last video, but the video before that, 42, the song was written by Brian and I, and it was directed the video by Nico and I went on and I said how proud I was of Nico at the time and I really really was he did an awesome job in that video um, even before that two, less than two years ago these are the two gentlemen who stood up for me as my best man in my wedding 
So abandonment, deadbeat dad, I've, like, I'll reiterate, I've never missed a day of child support. I've been there every step of the way. BJ, he talks about Jack's new car. Jack, BJ had three brand new cars before he was 22. But I'm not talking about material things because none of this has anything to do with money. It's about respect. Respect goes both ways. And even in family, there's a line that shouldn't and should not ever be crossed. Uh, it, it's crazy to me that people will just believe anything and I thought it was important to set the record straight and let you guys know that abandonment has nothing to do with any of this. Deadbeat dad, I've been there every step of the way. And let's also remember that these kids are 30 and 27, not 12. It's time for grown men to be grown men. And I'm sorry that tough love happens to, to be this way. Um, and it's, I do wish them the best. I want them to have and to reach their dreams and their full potential, but like, any other man in the world, you, you got to go out there and you got to take it. Um, as far as my daughter is concerned, um, you know, her mother, if you look back at my Instagram, she was a part of this family too, with Jack and Julie and Leilani and myself. And unfortunately, along the way, a couple of years ago, I got wind that there was an older cousin who was above 18, who was quite possibly having sex with her. So I called, as a father should, to... The, the state office for, for children's affairs there in Arizona, and I had never heard anything back, but the next thing that her mother did was to block all of us from her social media, from her phone, and completely estranged her from us. So what that told me was they didn't want me to be involved in her life that way. So to see the post that she said, considering that her mother only had a child with me for money in the first place, and I'll reiterate this, I have not missed a child support payment. She goes to one of the most incredible private schools in Arizona. Um, so I don't know where this is all coming from, but I thought that I needed to let everybody know that there's another side to this story. Um, you can choose to believe what you want. Uh, I, I thought that I would lay it out there for you. Anything that I say is actual and factual. All you have to do is Google Brian McKnight and Sons and you'll see us singing all over YouTube. Um, go back and look at my Instagram. Go back a couple of years. You'll see that I posted about all of my children. Um, but remember that these kids, these boys are, they're grown men and tough love is exactly what it is. It's tough love. So thanks everybody. Thanks for listening. And I hope that that gives you a little bit more perspective. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, what a sad situation for real, for real. I was just like, damn, like for real, for real. Like I really feel for, you know, Brian McKnight's daughter, Bree, because she's going through some things. And for him to say that, you know, she was basically the mama just basically entrapped him. You know what I'm saying? To have a baby so she can get that money and then bricks. I was just like, whoa, that's really harsh to hear for anybody, especially a teenager someone that's under the age of 18 and then on top of that for Brian McKnight to put out that you know she was allegedly having you know intercourse with a family member that is over the age of 18 and putting it out there that you know what Brian McKnight did do the right thing by calling the authorities but damn he should have took it a step further and went down there and got his daughter if the woman that you know he impregnated only wanted money I would have gave her some racks some stacks some bands some dollars some change some coins some quarters some gold some diamonds or something and just be like yo can i have full custody of my daughter can i have my daughter most of the year for real for real like especially for his daughter to be in that type of relationship and not going down and you can't count on your father you can't you can't depend on your father to come and rescue you like superman even if the young daughter wanted to be in a relationship with a family member but it's your job it's your duty to come and rescue her and take her away even though the mom changed the social media address the phone number the email whatever the case may be you guys came exchange or you didn't see each other i would have flew down there i would have been in a hotel i would have been at days and i would have been at the motel holiday inn or somewhere basically trying to make sure my daughter know that i'm here for her if she needs help if she wants to escape the situation of what she's going through with her mother let me get her let me grab her let me take her because that's my seed that's my daughter and a father a daughter needs her father for real for real but i guess there's some other circumstances going on where he couldn't do that i don't know i was just like mm, mm, mm. now that girl now his daughter brie is on blast like that her whole school knows her family members knows everybody knows the business and what is going on with that situation i would have been pressing charges i would have been like doing the most for real for real my daughter my baby girl oh no this is not going down i would have been camping out in front of her house for real for real 
because daughters look at their father as a hero when something's going on they they dream they wish they hope they pray that their father would come and save them but it just didn't go down in the situation i guess brian mcknight felt like his hands were tied in the situation but i'm just saying i would have did a whole lot more especially if my daughter's under age two as well and you know most likely she's being taken advantage of and she doesn't have the guidance or the protection that she needs and you know what being her father you should but let's move on let's move on to what started it all what started it all it went down when brian mcknight went on to instagram and he put out a post and basically he posted about his stepson you know jack which um brian mcknight is married to you know his mother which is Leilani and they've been married they got married about two years ago so basically he went on Instagram and he posts how proud he was of you know Jack you know basically getting a job working at McDonald's and saving up the money to buy his own car and basically being his own man or whatever the case may be and you know what he wanted to help his stepson basically be proud and you know so he posted you know on Instagram to let everybody know that you know my son's working hard my stepson's working hard he is my son period point blank and and he's doing what he's supposed to do. So you know what? He's rewarded with a Dodge Charger. I think that's the name of the core or whatever the case may be. And so, you know, his kids felt a certain type of way because we don't know his kids' situation or their living situation. Or they feel like their pro their father is, you know, abandoned them because he's married a new woman. Even though they was the best men at Brian McKnight's, their father's, you know, wedding. But they feel like, damn, you posting all this and what about us? Even though we know Brian McKnight and his sons, they did songs together, you know they sung together one of them produced a song for brian mcknight too as well but that was years ago and they're probably feeling a certain type of way they're probably feeling hurt they're probably feeling abandoned even though they're the age of 30 and 27 you know some some life lessons went wrong for the kids or whatever the case may be i was just like yo this is just way too much for real for real like yo like hey guys, they put brian, it all out yeah, here so uh, um brian mcknight oldest hours. son you know brian basically Tomorrow he posted to instagram to after brian and mcknight and post about his stepson and jack and basically heinous, he's just saying that his father does not have any empathy and he doesn't life, you know treat them like that they're his actual son especially his oldest son especially his firstborn son and especially his son that carry on his name and his bloodline too as well and if and his oldest the son feel like the father has chosen to treat them bad and basically neglect them and move on with his life and abandon his kids and move forward but Brian McKnight was like yo listen I paid every child support I never miss a child support I always paid I, I'm current I was current on my child support you guys are growing you take care of yourself but the older son is just like damn my father resents us because of the way that we was raised he introduced us to a lifestyle he introduced us to wealth and now he resents us because basically you know life has caught up with them based now, you know what the son 18, is saying and you know they were spoiled uh, I guess he's saying that you know their father introduced them to a life where things were wonderful things were great whatsoever and things were going on and things were wonderful in their situation they had it going on and basically you know the father you know took you know the purse strings and he cut them off and was like yo you listen you got to do what you need to do you got to take care of yourself and the oldest son feels like damn the father he resents us but he spoiled us you know he gave us this he gave us that he didn't teach us the value of money the value of work and the value of this and that because you know what when you were growing up your parents your mother and your father whoever's raising you is supposed to teach you how to fight how to survive how to stay strong how to stay how to keep up how to know how to maneuver your way through life they're supposed to teach you and show you and i guess you know the oldest son is saying that that didn't happen and brian mcknight is also saying that he spoiled his child you know the old saying if you sp spare the rod spoil the child and this is what happened so his two oldest sons are basically don't have you know the strength, the knowledge, and the well-being to actually raise their self and actually pull their self up and basically do everything on their own because they was accustomed to a lifestyle where things were handed to them and they had a good lifestyle. And I was just like, damn, you had a good lifestyle. Take your ass to school. Get the shit together. But I don't know if Brian McKnight wanted to pay for their college or if they did want to go to college or whatever the case may be. But the, Olins, the older sibling is just basically saying that he's just hurt. He's hurt for his sister because, you know, um, Brian McKnight doesn't 
take care of his sister. And he also wants to put a message out there that, hey, listen, we need people to hold entertainers and people that are legends and black fathers accountable for not taking care of their kids and abandoning their kids and not teaching their kids. So this is the older son basically posting this out to you know instagram because he feels a certain type of way about the situation i don't blame him but the thing about it is it's going to make the relationship even more strained i don't know if the oldest son brian was able he's 30 something years old i don't know if he was able to call his father reach out and talk to his father and say hey dad you know what that post that you put on instagram it kind of hurt me i kind of i felt like you was taking a dagger at me i felt i feel this way i feel that way but i don't know if he's able to talk to his father if he even if he wants to talk to his father, but he took the Instagram to post, you know, his father's a deadbeat. His father's not there and he needs to be held accountable about, you know, abandoning his kids and the issues that they do have. And so it is what it is. I guess Brian McKnight feels like he has done as much as he can. And I don't know how Brian McKnight was raised. I don't know if he had his mother, his father, whatever the case may be, but maybe his two sons and his daughter are going to need to, you know, erase that generational curse and do the best that they can to make it survive for their selves and for their children. And also the oldest son, Brian, is basically saying that Brian McKnight is not a part of, you know, his first grandchild life or whatever. He's not there. It's a sad situation because, you know, it's just bad. Like, you got a father and two sons exchange, exchange from each other. They're not talking to each other. They're not friends. You know, where's the love? Where's the hope? Like, let's talk to each other. Let's call each other on the phone, basically, because this post and this this post that his older son put out there only... Only did only thing that it did was bring a wedge between Brian McKnight and his children. And, you know, it made it even bigger and bigger. But I guess he wanted to put it on blast and this is the only way he can feel better. So I guess this is his therapy. And the therapy nowadays is tell everybody what's going on in your life, what's happening, who's bad, who's good or whatever. And you put it online thinking that it's going to change things. It can actually make things worse. But only the future would tell whether these posts from his children would actually make their relationship better or close or make you know, any of the four realize that they need to get together, they need to bond. I'm just like, yo, this is just like real crazy. So Brian McKnight, basically he moved on, you know, with a new life with his now wife, you know, Leani. Leon, I believe her name is, and her son, Jack. And basically, Brian McKnight is saying that, you know, she's helpful, she's wonderful, and she's trying to keep the sons together. Her, His two sons was actually at his wedding. They were the best men at the wedding. So he doesn't know where this is coming from unless he doesn't understand that his kids feel a certain type of way. And they feel like, you know, maybe he's showing more love and maybe he's doing more for his new wife. But of course, that's his new wife and his new son. You guys and adults, there's not much he can do for you. But I would make sure my kids are taken care of. I would make sure everything's on point. I would make sure everything's all set with the situation that my kids are good. Regardless, I hope they have a trust fund. I, I, I hope he doesn't cut them out the life insurance policy or whatever the case may be. So I don't know, even know. Like, this is crazy. And then with the daughter, his daughter and her situation and what she's going through, I was just like, whoa, like this is just, this is just real, real crazy. And it's just like, damn, his daughter's been put on blast and she's under the age of 18 talking about her in dowers or basically being taken advantage of as a teenager. I was just like, yo, mm, mm, mm. Oh, boy, I, I just wouldn't be able to do it. Like, you know, sometimes you do have kids that are not the greatest. Sometimes you do have kids that, you know, it, it it's hard to talk to. It's hard to deal with. They're selfish. You know, they're spoiled. They're rotten or whatever the case may be. But I could not find myself not having a conversation with my kids in a year or two or three or even six months or even a month. Because that's your seed. That's your blood. Because when you go on, ain't nobody else going to be there for them like the way that you are there for them. And you got to prepare them for life. You got to prepare them when you leave this earth. You got to prepare them so they know that when you go on, they'll be able to move on. They'll be able to survive. They'll be able, you know, to take 
take care of their self. And I don't believe his sons have, you know, the mental capacity to take care of their self or whatever the case may be. Because if they did, they wouldn't be out here posting what they're posting. And they basically feel neglected and they feel like their father forgot about him. 30 is young, 27 is young too, but they also are grown men and they got to take care of their self and do their thing. But you know what? They want to be out here online and basically tell the world how it is because they feel like there's other people that can relate to their situation too as well. And Brian McKnight did say that, you know, he put his children in an apartment for two years and paid the rent. And basically for them to, you know, basically take care of their self and get things together, or whatever the case may be. But, you know, you can do that. But if you're not showing them, you're not giving them the tools, they're not able to do that. They don't know responsibility. They don't know how to hold down a job. They don't know how to go get clean urine because basically Brian McKnight was saying that his sons, you know, got a job from their, from his new wife now, Leonie. Liane, whatever her name is, at, at the hospital and was making $18 an hour, but they couldn't pass a drug test. So, damn, like, they need to be smarter. Like, you know what? Let's go get you some urine. They sell clean urine all over the place. Like, do what you need to do, baby. Like, what's going on? But see, like, they don't have the skills to survive, you know, or the skills to just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to put down this marijuana. There was something lacking in their childhood that they didn't get. They didn't get the survivor skills. They didn't get, you know, the skills for them to be able to depend on their self and actually make make it out of you know treacherous situations like they don't they don't have the survivor skills period point blank um because age 30 and age 27 you know some some kids and some men will say the hell with my daddy i got my own life i don't need him i could take care of myself i can survive by myself i don't need your money i don't need nothing i don't even need to talk to you if you don't want me a part of your life then i won't be a part of your life but them people them males usually have the skills they usually have the function they you know have the tenacity and they have the determination and the strength to actually fight and move forward and i don't believe his sons actually have that that's something that is lacking you know they don't have their father's determination to make it and succeed like he did and I don't know if he was able to teach him that because he was hot back then you know he had hundreds and hundreds of women shows everything you know life was grand and great so he probably just dropped off a car dropped off a gift dropped off some clothes dropped off some money and kept it moving baby and they didn't get the skills that they need from their mother either or anybody else in their family because you know what they will move on in adversity you know what I'm saying but they out here basically telling the world how they feel and how they feel like their father is not a good father and basically he ain't no good legend and let's call, call out these black fathers i was like damn it's going down like for real for real mm -mm -mm. This is a this is a crazy situation, but I believe that post that Brian McKnight put up about his stepson really hurt them. It, it was really a dagger, and maybe they took it personal. And from the text that um, the son wrote and the daughter wrote, you know, on Instagram, you could tell that they was crying when they wrote them texts. You can tell that they was hurt. You can tell that they was hurt. They, you know what? Sometimes if you don't heal from your childhood, you don't you can't you know be productive in your future. And the children need some help. You know, they're adults. The adult men, they need some help. They need some counseling. I couldn't just imagine not even talking to my children, whether they're 30, 31, 27, 28, 18, 19, or whatever the case may be, because I know this is a cruel, hard world. And you either get got or you got. You know what I'm saying? Either you're a sheep or you're a wolf. And this is a cold world out here in these streets especially with you hearing the rate of african-american men being locked up and being you know their life being taken away by the popos the police you know what i'm saying so i would i would you know what if i can't give them money i'll talk to them on the phone I'll, if even if they don't want to talk to me i'm gonna call them and talk to them and try to give them some life skills you know what it's never too late only when it's too late is when you're gone but the way he talked about his daughter brian mcknight put her out on blast damn he should have held back on that. You guys tell me how you feel about the situation. I hope they get some counseling. I hope they get some help. I hope the situation brings them closer together and not farther apart. Peace. I'm out. One love to all my peeps and my peoples.